So what is assisted reproductive technology or treatment, often just called ART? ART aims to do exactly what it says, help couples who are having problems getting pregnant to have a baby. The type of intervention or treatment depends on why the couple are having problems getting pregnant. In this part of the course you'll learn about four major technologies used in assisted reproductive technology. These are ovulation induction, artificial insemination or intrauterine insemination, IUI, and in vitro fertilisation, or IVF, and intracytoplasmic sperm injection, or ICSI. These treatments can be used individually or in combination, and vary in invasiveness from least to most invasive. Using the least invasive option possible may have benefits by allowing more selection for high quality embryos, so that healthier babies are born. Ovulation induction describes treatments to stimulate the production and release of oocytes from a woman. It's used when a woman either doesn't ovulate or doesn't ovulate regularly. Oral medication is sufficient for ovulation induction in some women, although not all. Ovulation induction is the least invasive method of ART. Artificial insemination, or intrauterine insemination, aims to increase the chances of conception by delivering the sperm closer to the oocyte, either during a natural cycle or when ovulation has been stimulated using medication. Semen or washed sperms delivered through the cervix into the uterus using a catheter. Artificial insemination may be used when the woman has functioning overducts and it's not clear why she's having problems getting pregnant. It's also used where the male partner has problems that prevent semen delivery to the vagina or where his sperm's been frozen, for example before cancer treatments. The process of in vitro fertilisation requires ovulation induction using injected drugs. IVF can overcome more fertility problems than ovulation induction alone. IVF and intracytoplasmic sperm injection, or ICSI, both involve bringing sperm and oocyte together outside the body to produce an embryo, which can then be transferred into the woman. If the woman cannot carry a pregnancy, then embryos generated using ART might be carried by a surrogate. Surrogacy is an arrangement where a woman agrees to carry a pregnancy for another woman or couple, who will become the baby's parent or parents after birth. In ICSI, the sperm is directly injected into the oocyte, so this can correct for more problems than IVF. Assisted reproductive technology and treatments have been used successfully. It's estimated that more than 6 million babies have been born from IVF worldwide since Louise Brown became the first baby born from IVF in 1978. About 1 in 29 of today's Australian schoolchildren were conceived by IVF. I'm Michael Davies. I'm a professor in reproductive epidemiology uh, within the Robinson Research Institute at the University of Adelaide. As an epidemiologist, I'm concerned with the distribution and causes of disease at a population level. One of the um, most straightforward things I can do uh, is to stop smoking for the duration of, uh, duration of treatment and pregnancy uh, at least, uh, if, and if longer if possible because that will uh, effectively double their chance of having a successful treatment cycle and therefore minimise exposure to all of the invasive therapies. Managing weight is also uh, very effective at increasing the chance of treatment while also reducing the, uh, the risk of adverse events in pregnancy. The health and welfare of both the mother and the baby have been of intense interest to us for some years now. Uh, and we've published fairly comprehensively on this. And again, there are both contributions from the mother, potentially, and maybe perhaps even the father, uh, in addition to certain treatment factors. What we do know is that the uh, babies born from uh, assisted conception are comprehensively disadvantaged with regards to routinely reported perinatal outcomes. There's an uh, increased risk of major birth defects, increased rates of low birth weight, very, uh, very low birth weight, preterm birth, and very preterm birth, uh, uh, stillbirth and neonatal death uh, and we have 
perhaps uniquely also observed there's increased risks of cerebral palsy due both to the treatments perhaps uh, but then also to the model pregnancy rates. This is commonly cited that the, uh, the great majority of babies born from IVF uh, are normal or relatively healthy. However, what we see at a population level is that this contributes an enormous burden of disability, uh, death and disease. The high risk of multiple births in IVF is due to transferring uh, several embryos at, at once. And this was introduced in the early 80s to overcome extremely low uh, pregnancy rates. And what's happened since is that implantation rates uh, have improved dramatically due to increased uh, uh, performance in the laboratory. Uh, and we now have an epidemic of multiple births around the world, where in some clinics the majority of babies born are born from multiple gestations. In order to reduce this epidemic, uh, uh, we in Adelaide, for example, introduced a single embryo transfer trial to try and uh, reduce, if not eliminate, the, uh, the excess of multiple births. So that having a, a single birth is healthier, uh, for, for, certainly healthier for the baby uh, and dramatically reduces the risk of complications in pregnancy for the mother. Um, it's a case that single embryo transfer is actually seldom used in, in IVF clinics and, and, so, and it's highly variably used. Uh, in some countries, it's been, in Sweden, uh, for example, uh, it's been legislated that single embryo transfer should be the norm. In Australia, uh, single embryo transfer is the norm, but that's through a voluntary uh, uh, self-regulation process. It's 95% of all treatment cycles, for example, in South Australia. However, in the US, it's still the case that over 20% of all births uh, are uh, born from multiple gestations, and that because of the expansion of the, of the technology in the market, the total number of twins in the US in higher order pregnancies continues to grow. Ah, well, the, uh, one can start to try, to, for example, change the hyperstimulation protocol to tailor that more specifically to the uh, metabolism of, 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 of a woman. Uh, one can also uh, use uh, frozen cycles rather than fresh cycles so that to allow the endometrium to recover somewhat more for the preparation of implantation. Uh, one can choose uh, less invasive procedures. Uh, for example, it's now the case that ICSI, which is really very invasive, is now the predominant treatment globally. Uh, however, what we know from a very large study in the US is that it may produce higher fertilization rates, but the take-home baby rates are no better than traditional IVF, but the perinatal outcomes are worse. The question of whether IVF is getting safer is a very important one. Uh, we've recently been funded to investigate exactly this question by ex having a cohort study of the entire population of South Australia, where we can look across the entire history of IVF treatments and see how procedures have changed and then look at perinatal outcomes. Uh, internationally, what's become apparent is that some of the adverse perinatal outcomes are starting to improve, uh, even amongst the singletons. Some of that may be uh, due to increasing use of single embryo transfer. However, uh, one suspects that, uh, in, that there's been improvements in, in the embryology as well. Uh, culture medias have improved, but then also the, uh, the use of uh, high quality incubators is now more widespread. What we see are higher birth rates that are due perhaps to uh, better embryology and higher quality embryos being produced. It's important to consider that IVF can, can also be used to reduce the risk of certain types of defect in children. Uh, it can be used for screening for genetic abnormalities, for example, that may be familial and concentrated in certain populations. Uh, and so we can actually screen embryos and choose an embryo that is, that is uh, missing uh, perhaps a defective gene. And in the future, it may also be able to be used uh, for screening, uh, whole of population screening to reduce the risk, for example, of cystic fibrosis.